Hey there, this is Chris Sev from Better Dev, and today we're going to use Tailwind to rebuild and recreate the Slack logo. All of this is done with purely Tailwind classes, no custom CSS at all. And before we get started into the code, I want to talk a little bit about the technique we're using here. So if I go right click inspect this, I'm going to highlight right here the thing where the Slack logo is. And you'll notice it's a CSS grid. So the CSS grid that we're going to use here is all Tailwind classes. And I have a video on the Tailwind grid if you're interested. But the cool thing about this is that we can build all of this with a 4x4 grid and a few divs inside of that. With that in mind, let's get started. So I'm going to close that, open up a brand new code pen. And from here, I'm going to go into CSS. And I'm going to add in the Tailwind style sheet. So I'm going to click there, press save. And now we have access to Tailwind. So the first thing we're going to do here is let me zoom in for you all to the 20 pixels. I'm going to press a div here. And this is a div that's going to contain the entire project that we're building. And this is how I like to start all of my demos. Min height is screen. We're going to go background is pink at 400. And we're going to center everything within this. So I'm going to say flex items, center, and justify center. And that will center horizontally and vertically. Now from there, we're going to go and create a div for the white circle, which is the background of the logo. So to do that, let's go for class background is white. And you won't really see anything yet. So let's give this a height and a width. So let's go height 64 and width is 64. So there's our square there. We need to round it out. So let's go for rounded full. And rounded full will get us a full circle. And once we have rounded full, let's give this a shadow of maybe uh, 2XL. Now, the last thing I want to do here is let's just make sure that everything is uh, has some padding. So let's go for a padding of 10. And then within this, we're going to create a div, which is going to be... And let's start commenting out some stuff. So this is going to be the grid. And this is going to be a 4x4 grid. And then inside of this grid, we're going to have some blues. Uh, that's so weird. So blues, we're going to go greens. And let's see what else is in there. Uh, reds and oranges. So for each of these, we're going to have two divs. If we go back to look at the logo, we have blue, blue, green, green, red, red, orange, orange. So if I go over here, I'm going to click into each of these and I'm holding control and I'm clicking so that we can get uh, multi cursors here. I'm going to go for div right there. And let's go for another div right there. So now we have blues, greens, reds, and oranges. So for the blues, let's go for a class is equal to background blue at 400. And let's see what this ends up with for us. It won't really do anything because there is no height or width set on this. And there's no contents of it, so there's nothing to put a background on. So to make sure that we can show our little sections here, I'm going to go ahead and create the grid. So let's go straight to the grid. We're going to go with class is equal to grid. And the grid class is the original class that we need to say display is grid. And the thing with CSS grid is that you need to define a grid. So you need to define columns and rows. So let's do grid columns is four. And let's go for grid rows is four. All right, nothing is showing yet. So let's go right click and see what's going on here. Inspect. I believe if we go look at our grid here, here's our grid. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a height on it. So it's the full width, but it's not taking up the height of our white circle. So let me go here. Let me close this. It's getting really hard to see there. So let's go for width is full and height is full. And by doing height is full, that now creates our 4x4 four four grid. And now we have our blue circles here. So let me do the same for green. Let's go for class is background green at 400. Let's go for class is background red. And red, I was playing around with it earlier. 600 is going to work out closest to the Slack logo. And orange, unfortunately, with Tailwind 2.0, orange doesn't uh, come in the default color palette. So we're going to mess around with background yellow at 400. Now let's go for 500. That gets us a little closer to orange. 
cool. So this is going to be our squares that we're going to use to eventually create the Slack logo. So here we have our grid rows, grid rows here. We need some spacing between these, so let's go for gap is two. So that's really cool there that you can create a gap uh, right there and just create a gap in between all of your grid sections. So the next step here is let's make sure that we can uh, create all of our rounded edges. So I'm going to highlight all of these right here and we're gonna go for rounded is full. So that'll get us nice circles. And from here, we can start placing them in the grid. So what we did here is we created our four by four grid. We created the children of that grid. Now we just have to place them. With CSS grid, we can place things and say, hey, you div, you're starting on row two on column two and you are going to span across two columns. So with CSS grid, you can really fine tune where you place things. In Tailwind, we uh, have some really nice classes that we can do this with. So for this first one, I'm gonna say, hey, column start is two. So that will push this one over to the second column. Now this one right here, we need it to start on row start is two. So now that gets pushed down to row two, but we also need it to span two columns. So we're gonna say column span is two. So that will go across two columns. So that is looking good there. And we'll do the same exact thing for the greens, reds, and oranges. So this first green, I believe is in a good spot. Let's go double check the Slack logo. It is in a good spot, but it needs to span two down. So over here, instead of column span, we're gonna say, hey, you, row, span, two. And that's there. And then this one right here, we're gonna say, hey, you, row, start, is two. But also, it tried to move itself over to the column number three, so we also have to say column start is four. So that pushes that over there. And now look at our red trying to fill the space. And we have to specifically tell red and orange where to go. So let me go look at the Slack logo. Okay, we have one here and two up and down. So if we go back here, we have this red is in a good spot. Um, I don't know which one that is actually. So let's test. Okay, well, teal isn't in Tailwind 2. It was in Tailwind 1. So we let's go for a background purple just to see where it is and it looks like this first one is up in the top right. So we're gonna say, hey you, um, row start is three, and uh, that should be good. Cool, and we can change this back to red. Now for this one, we say column start is two. Row start, oh, we don't have to do row start, but let's do a row span is two. So that'll get it to be the full height, and that looks good. And now we can style out our oranges, which is really yellow. And I like doing the row start, column start. I like doing the grid classes before all of the other classes, just so I can quickly look at this grid and say, oh, well, this is column start two, row start two. And then we do all of the other Tailwind classes at the end there. All right, so orange, this one, let's go for column span is two. It needs to span the width right there. And then this one down here, we need to say, uh, column start is three, and I think that's good. Cool. So that is the uh, grid placement part of this tutorial, and thanks to Tailwind's CSS grid classes, which are really, really nice and succinct, um, we are able to place things around just using some classes, and look at this, zero custom CSS. Very, very fun there. One last part to this, we need to make sure that the uh, Slack logo has this little pointy on each one. So we have rounded is full for our overall uh, divs. So that gives them a full circle. Now let's add a class to reset one of the corners to having no border radius. So for this one here, rounded full, we wanna say rounded bottom right is none. And let me zoom out here so you can see border right is none, bottom right is none. And let's do the same for this red one. I believe the red one is this one right here. So let's say rounded, top right is none. There we go. Um, green is bottom left and orange is top left. So let's go to the green one. 
rounded. Bottom left is none. Well, wrong one. So let's take this one and place it on the other one. Cool. And then finally for this one, I don't remember which one it is. So let's try rounded. Top left is none. And we picked the wrong one. 50-50 chance. Let's go down and place it there. So there you go. That is what it takes to build out the Slack logo in Tailwind. We were able to center everything, create a background, which is a white circle. We were able to create a four by four grid, and we were able to create all parts of the Slack logo using only Tailwind classes and CSS grid. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I think it's a really fun one to mess around with and try to learn CSS grid through Tailwind. And it's a fun example to use Tailwind without any custom CSS anyway. So if you did like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.